We're going to the gym today. We are hitting glutes and hammies. As always, I'm gonna give you in-depth tips for each workout. I am back on creatine now. I number one recommended supplement to get on if you are trying to build muscle. This is your girl. If you're trying to grow your glutes, if you're trying to gain any muscle at all, these are keys. So, listen up. A lot of you are not training hard enough and then you wonder why your muscles are not changing. B stance RDLs with rotation. If you've not tried these, you need to try them immediately. If you know that one cheek is stronger than the other cheek. I love these even more than I thought I would. This gray is like the perfect light gray. besties we are back with another workout video as you can tell i'm wearing full fit from honor active matching set it's gonna be on a try on haul that i post soon so stay tuned for that but we're going to the gym today we are hitting glutes and hammies this is a workout that i've showed you before but consistency is key focus on progressive overload with the same workouts that's the key so we've been doing the same workouts for a couple months now Mm -hmm. but I've really been enjoying my current programming my split I just need to be more consistent with it as always I'm gonna give you in-depth tips for each workout and talk you through it a little bit and yeah first of all we make breakfast I'll show you what I make for breakfast afterwards because this is just getting repetitive at this point I've literally shared this ex same exact breakfast with you guys probably like 10 times breakfast is ready greek yogurt to add a little protein calories and then my regular little bagel and egg sitting over here to hang out with this cutie little girl we're about to make some pre-workout and then head straight to the gym because it's 11 35 right now and i want to be in and out of there as soon and quickly as possible <clears throat> I really do mix it up a lot, but sometimes I love using like juice for my pre-workout. So today we're using it. I do six ounces. I don't drink a lot of water or whatever liquid with my pre-workout just because I like to down it. And if I fill it up like full, it's not going to get finished. We are using mango guava pre-workout today. I can't decide if I want to do one or two scoops. We're gonna do one scoop. Since I only did one scoop of the pre-workout, I'm gonna add some creatine. Yes, I am back on creatine now. I just restarted a couple days ago and I'm really excited. But I can make a whole thing talking about this. I have lots of videos on my other socials talking about creatine, what it is, benefits, all of that. But it is an amazing supplement. I highly recommend it. Just make sure you are drinking enough water. It's my number one recommended supplement to get on if you are trying to build muscle. This is your girl. Look how cute the container is. Of course, you can use my code, Lindsay, to save a little bit of money on your one sole purchase. If you have used my code, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support because I know it's an extra step and I know that there's so many people with codes out there, but I appreciate you choosing to support me. Please let me know if you do use my code. I rarely have people let me know that they use my code and I just like see people have gotten stuff and I'm always like, who got this? Who got this? I want to thank you personally for supporting me. So let me know if you ever use my one soul code or any of my other codes. Let's head out to the gym. 
it is time for a little booty building bestie pre-workout chat. We are going to be talking about some of the key fundamental principles for training, what a lot of people are underestimating and not prioritizing. If you're trying to grow your glutes, if you're trying to gain any muscle at all, these are keys. So listen up. Let's get into it. Number one, nutrition. Working out can be easy sometimes. The nutrition aspect of everything is what can be really challenging for some, including myself. But nutrition is the literal key to success in any type of fitness journey, no matter your goals. You have to be on top of nutrition, otherwise you're not going to see success. I have a whole video talking about bulking and my journey and tips I have, so I'll leave that in the cards right now. If you are trying to lose weight, if you are trying to maintain more body recomp, no matter what your goals are, nutrition is key. The second thing is actually to do with your training and how you train, progressive overload. I know workouts can get boring and tiring and whatever. You want to switch up your workouts, but listen to me. You need to be keeping the same routine for at least six weeks, four to six weeks. That is the key. You need to be keeping the same workouts, the same routine, and just focusing on increasing intensity with each of the exercises. I've even had clients that get confused when I don't like change up their workouts every week or every two weeks. They have the same program for at least a month, if not six weeks. And that is because you have to focus on progressive overload. So I'll give you like a little example of what progressive overload could look like for you. So let's talk about it in terms of a glute bridge or a hip thrust. So week one, you are doing a hundred pound glute bridge, hip thrust, whatever. Your 100 pounds is you train till failure, 8 to 12 reps. We're going to get into that later. Week two, you can either, you know, add a couple reps. Say you can train to failure till 10 reps, push yourself till 12 reps, or add a little bit of weight on that. 105, 102.5, whatever. That way, you are pushing yourself so your muscles do not adapt over time. Each week, you want to increase weight, reps, or decrease rest time. Just change it up. Make your body work a little harder for it so that your body does not get used to a certain weight and then it just kind of plateaus. It's because you're not pushing your muscles to grow. And that takes us into the other factor, which is training till failure. When someone says do four sets of 12, they're not meaning pick a random weight, do four sets of 12. They're meaning Pick the weight that you can literally only do 12 reps of and do four sets of those 12. You honestly should not be able to do four sets of 12. Because if you're truly training yourself till failure with every one of those sets, your reps are going to have to decrease because you're not going to be able to do 12 reps for each of those sets. You're going to have less energy in your body so you're probably going to do like 12 and then 10 and then 8 something like that a lot of you are not training hard enough a lot of you are barely pushing yourself through workouts you are not training with enough intensity to really see progress and you're using a weight that you could probably do 20 25 reps with to do 10 reps and then you wonder why your muscles are not changing because you're not pushing yourself hard enough I gotta come at you with the tough love right now. If you are not making ugly faces and struggling to finish that last rep, you are not pushing yourself hard enough. And I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes I just don't feel like it. But there's a huge difference between pushing yourself till failure and pushing yourself till mental or a barrier failure where it's like, oh, I feel a little burn. I'm gonna stop now. I'm talking like you can't do another rep. You cannot. You like physically could not do another hip thrust after 12 reps. That's why I always program 8 to 12 reps because I want you to stay in that range, but I want you to figure out what number is good for you with the weight you're training with. I hope these tips helped. Let me know if you have any like specific questions over any of those things. And of course, I can add those into videos coming up if you need one-on-one -on -one help. I do coaching. I have programs. I have things available for you to be tools for your journey. I got your back. I have even more in-depth content coming. 
centering around all things fitness. Now I need to finish my pre-workout and get into this gym. <laughs> Absolutely least favorite workouts ever. Ever. This is my first workout. Makes me feel like okay. Yeah, I got the rest of this workout. Easy. <laughs> I'm gonna go upstairs and actually grab a different pad because I'm not risking sitting on the floor. Got a mat. Let's test. Let's start. I have to go down in weight with these, I used to be doing like four or something, like easy, on creatine, and with like the actual belt machine, like this belt one, not like the one that's here. Working set, Wednesday, wait it is Wednesday, I'm on Monday, but I'm going to try to add some weight to it, I'm trying to add some weight to it today. We got a whole like neutral vibe going. Got another unactive package mailed to me today. So we're gonna do like a little mini try and haul in this video. Twelve. I can definitely add weight because that wasn't even too familiar to be too honest. Those were not even words. I'm adding weight. <laughs> so I'm gonna be able to recover better after this creatine kicks in to full saturation. Set, I added some weight. So now it is 315. We got it. I'm doing 10. 10. Let's do it. Sometimes when I'm like scared, I'm not gonna hit my goal. So like the 10, I'll divide it. So I'll count to five twice. It works for some reason. Kind of makes your work, your mind work on the counting versus like the actual pain. We are about to do B stance RDLs with rotation. If you've not tried these, you need to try them immediately. I'm gonna grab a dumbbell. I prefer a dumbbell. I've tried a kettlebell too. It just didn't work out for me because I didn't have enough range of motion with it. Pick it up. So your working leg is the opposite of your arm. So we're gonna do B stance. So regular RDL stance and then non-working leg goes back like a little kick stand. So now we're gonna take this dumbbell. We're crossing over and like rotating our upper body to that working leg. I definitely need my wrist straps. This is about to fall out my hand. Straps will be your best friends if you have no wrist strength, like me. I am actually using my program that I'm doing on my coaching app. It's the Grow With Lens Challenge that I just started April 1st. So B stands with rotation for extra spice. I'm gonna do with rotation instead of regular. And then next we have hyperextensions. This is how it should look. And like other side, same. You're gonna wrap this around the dumbbell and then hold on to it, you'll see. Happy wrap. Sometimes if it's not like tight as I want it, I push the dumbbell back so it like tightens on my wrist. Yell stance, kick back. Not kick back, but like step back with your non-working leg. Now we have this stance, rotate. Same as RDLs, you don't want to like go all the way down. You want to go just with your hinge range of motion. You want to make 
sure you take a break between the sides, okay? Knee stance, regular, step back. Ready? Sign, you need to drink some water. Five gulps is your assignment right now. Not only are unilateral movements good for hypertrophy, obviously, they're also really important if you have any muscle imbalances to train each side separately. I always go like this. <laughs> I'm talking about unilateral movements, like each side. But um, making sure that the balance, the muscles are balanced is very key. So if you know that one cheek is stronger than the other cheek, then make sure you're doing a lot of movements. And common misconception, every time I like explain glute imbalances and stuff like that, people assume that you should work your weaker side more. No. Don't work it more, work it evenly. Otherwise, then your weaker side will be your stronger side and then the other side will be uneven too. You have to train them evenly. So like I did 10 reps on one side, 10 reps on the other, even though 10 reps on my right side, since it's my weaker, was harder, I have to hit those 10 reps so that they're even and I keep pushing towards even amounts. Same weight, same reps, both sides, period. Don't like push yourself more with your weaker side because then they'll just be more uneven at the end of the day. It's gonna continue to train them unevenly. These are such a difficult workout to get down, but once you do, it's like, you're so good. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips. Your height is gonna be key. So you don't want it to be too low, but you don't want it to be too high. You wanna give your hips room. So I'd say this padding, when you lay down, you want it like right at your hip like that you don't want it too high or too low secondly you want to make sure your feet are turned out so what i like to do is actually put my legs on the pad like right here the inside of my thigh instead of like my quads in the front the middle of my legs right here the adductor area so that i'm actually like forced to be turned out like that you see the difference between like this and like this like my body's just like not really in the right form right here my whole legs are just already propped up in the right form. Not a huge, huge range of motion. Otherwise, you're gonna really be more incorporating your lower back, which obviously is gonna be incorporated anyways, but we really try to focus on hitting the glutes as much as possible with less lower back recruitment as much as possible. So, again, legs on your inner thigh area. Toes turned out. You see how my toes are turned out? They're not straight down, they're out. And then we're gonna do a slight bend in the back, like a little rounding or straight. It's totally unnecessary to like completely go like that. Now you wanna go back up. You don't wanna go like all the way back up here. You wanna go just until like your glutes are fully engaged and then go back down. It's a short range of motion like this. It's not like, it's not like that. It's really like this. Second to last workout, we were doing medius kickbacks using my ankle straps. We're gonna do pink today, going away from the neutrals. These are my ankle straps. I have pink and black, so if you like neutrals or if you like pink, I got them for both girls. I do not have a plate right now, but hopefully I'm good. Otherwise, I'll run downstairs and grab a little plate. Okay, let's go. A little off center. Turn a little bit off. Okay, now kick through. 
your foot. I'm like a little off. So whatever is the working side, you want to be a little off line of pull from it. Otherwise you're going to be like a lot of tension back on this not working leg. It's like ugh, gross but amazing. So these are like the only hamstring curls I like. You gotta push yourself into this padding right here. Kick up slow. package from honor active so let's do a little try and haul i don't know what happened to my package but it's basically half open yikes hopefully everything i have is in here okay everything looks like it's in here and it's not damaged first thing i got this color is beautiful even through the bag. The go-to seamless fitted long sleeve top in moonstone blue. I got a small, look how beautiful this color is. Wow, 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 wow. I really like these shirts already, I already know. Here is the top on, it is definitely nicely fitted. Totally different material than the Mellow Soft. So this is definitely more of like an athletic material but not like a slick material at all. It's very like moisture wicking, if that makes sense. Try these on with this top. These are the effortless leggings in the moonstone color. See, it? it's very, very close. It's obviously like the tiniest bit different. The leggings, they definitely feel a little different than the sand color I was wearing earlier. I feel like they're a little less like stretchy and there's more snug, I would definitely say. Um, it's probably like the colors. These colors definitely look very, very similar. Really, really close to the exact same color. I love this color. I love Honor Active is it pulls me out of my comfort zone. Like this is definitely not a color I would normally gravitate to, but I did because it's Honor Active. And I saw it on other people and I was like, wow, I actually really, really love that color. And I love Honor Active is it pulls me out of my comfort zone. Like this is definitely not a color I would normally gravitate to, but I did because it's Honor Active. And I saw it on other people and I was like, wow, I actually really, really love that color on other people. So let me try it. And I definitely love this. Definitely outside of my comfort zone as a color, but I'm trying to push myself outside of my comfort zone when it comes to getting different colors because I know like... I may be missing out on a color that's really good on me. I love this together, but I also love it separate, which you'll see because I have another pair of leggings. Effortless light gray marl. I know this color is gonna look so good with this gray. I am not someone that has a lot of gray leggings, to be honest. Like I don't have a lot of gray and I need a new good gray legging. So I saw this one drop and i was like okay this is like the perfect light gray so let me snag it so let's try it on together and see how it looks with this blue too i love these even more than i thought i would this gray is like the perfect light gray and it's just it's like perfect i love it these are super cute i feel like they're pretty pretty squat proof i know they're probably a little sheer but i feel like they're pretty good and can we just these colors together yeah these leggings definitely too are more stretchy than the Moonstone. Maybe it's like the lighter colors, more stretchy fabric, because these are definitely a little bit of a different material, more stretchy and less compact feeling, which honestly, I don't mind either. I like both of them. Hope you enjoyed my little 
on our active mini try and haul. Actually about to head to Sephora for the Sephora sale. So let's go. I need to take a moment to de-influence you. Yep. I really just told you guys I was going to Sephora for the Sephora sale. And listen, I literally pulled up in the parking lot, sat in my car, was on the phone talking to my boyfriend about a vacation that we're going on next month, which I'm really excited about. And I realized, what do you even need? <laughs> what, what do you even need? I do not need anything from Sephora. We are so pressured to get stuff, especially when there's a sale, because I know there's rarely any, any sales. There's rarely any sales. So we are so pressured for when there is that we have to get stuff like stuff you want to try stuff, whatever. But right now I'm trying to save money. I don't need to go get this lip liner. I've been wanting to try. Would it be cool to get it right now when it's on sale? Cool, yes. But I'm going to be fine without the lip liner. I have a lot of lip liners. Maybe not as good quality, whatever. I have other products I need to use up before I get new stuff to try out. I'm just trying to rack my mind on what things I actually like really need to incorporate in my routine, whatever. And there's really nothing on the list of things that I wanted to get that I need in my routine right now. Like I had a, f a frizz spray, which that'd be great. But then I looked at my hair in the mirror and I was like, I'm fine without a frizz spray. Honestly, I just need to get a good oil. The lip liner, I can wait for a lip liner. Like I have a bunch of other lip liners practically in the same color. I can wait to get like a better quality lip liner. The eight like tinted moisturizer or BB cream, whatever. I've been wanting to try this and I'm definitely going to get it at some point, but I still have my rare beauty tinted moisturizer. I have other stuff and I'm going to focus on using what I have before I go and get something else. Otherwise, the thing that I think I may actually get is online because I've been really wanting this fragrance and it's pretty expensive but if it's on sale and in stock right now, I'm snagging it because it is glorious. It is glorious. Like my boyfriend would sneak sprays because I got a little sample size of it. He would sneak sprays of it. It's a very like gender neutral fragrance. It is the dead cool milk fragrance. If you have smelled it, you know, you know, it is literally a head turning fragrance. It's like so it's so unexplainable. Literally just like it smells like comfort and like skanks is really, really well with other fragrances. So honestly, that's the only thing I think I'm going to buy, but I'm saving money <laughs> and I don't need to be buying all of this extra stuff just because it is on sale. Guys, I never ended the vlog, so I'm sorry about that, loves. Same content coming and I'm really excited to just take you along the new chapter and journey in my life. Appreciate you all for staying till the end. See you guys in my next video. Thank you guys so much for being here. Mwah!